Hey guys, Stealth here and welcome back to Taskmaster Tuesday of Ultimate Apple Dreadnoughts. Today I'd like to welcome the Serious Strategy Gamer to our little Taskmaster group. It's a new challenger and, well, he's going to jump right in with building a heavy cruiser on this particular challenge. The challenge was devised by Brother Monroe and all the other contestants can be found linked down below in the description. It's a two-parter challenge slash, um, let's say part two is more of the wind conditions. It is 1935 and you've been tasked with designing a brand new pocket battleship, aka a heavy cruiser, for the Kriegsmarine. This ship is to be designed to hunt the merchantmen of our enemies right across the globe. As we do not have the luxury of port facilities far and wide, the ship must have very long range. Resources are limited, not just in terms of money, but also the technology and specialists in the shipyards. In his great wisdom, the Kaiser has decreed that you will have 40 points available to spend according to the following cost matrix. Now that is going to be the, the, the first thing that we look at. What is the cost matrix? And um, the enemy that we need to keep in mind while building a ship, one heavy cruiser and two light cruisers. So let's design the ship and have a look at that, uh, that fairly extensive cost matrix. All right, so we have 40 points, and these can be spent as we see fit. Ranging from uh, minimum bulkheads, so uh, minimum bulkheads are free. Standard bulkheads cost you two points, three points for many, and four points for maximum. Displacement does not seem to be bound by any kind of limitation, so I can go as high as 20,500 tons. Uh, yeah, that seems fine. Speed. Similarly, not limited, but at the end of the road, you have to be able to get up to at least 18 knots if you've been damaged, and range is to be set to very long. Um, now then, let's start assigning some points, and considering how much there is to be uh, devised about this ship, let's draw up some pen and paper. We got propulsion, uh, we got protection, and we have firepower, armament. I have 40 points to spend total. Um, oh, and of course I have equipment. E equipment. Equipment is what I'm going to start with first because I want the ship to be accurate. Unfortunately, radar, generation two radar is gonna cost you three points. Let's say that I have um, 10 points for each category, more or less. Starting with propulsion. If I want to get geared or double geared steam turbines, which is usually my favorite option because it's the best medium between speed, um, while well, cost is not really a factor in this one, and engine acceleration or ship acceleration, just sheer horsepower per ton, the double geared steam turbines are great for that. It's going to cost me two points. So, spent two points in prop. Um, semi oil to oil doesn't. Well, in this case, it saves me 700 tons. So from um, semi-oil to oil is another point. That's three points spent here. Boilers. Um, considering how I'm going to set this ship up, I might need two boilers. or two, Well, not two boilers, two funnels. Got the Uber funnel here. 49%. If I go for an... An induced boiler, there we go, 93.5%. And that's at 32 knots, I might adjust this somewhat. Induced boilers, one point. Then we have the auxiliary engines. Um, auxiliary engine one is free, that's really nice. And shaft one is also free. So I'm just going to assign four points to props for now. Now, group armor, group four armor is going to set me back three points. So let's set that up. Barbettes, uh, I'm facing a heavy cruiser. The AI has a tendency to make those fairly lightly armed, seven or eight inch guns. And that means that some barbette armor is gonna be required, but not a ton of it. Barbette two costs you one point. That's four points so far spent in protection. Anti-torpedo, mm, I'm gonna go without that because I'm not expecting to get hit by torpedoes at all. And this saves you a lot of weight, because this can really quickly make your hull very, very heavy. So no anti-torpedo protection. Then we have the hull. Single hull is free. Uh, double bottom hull is one point and two points for triple hull. 
It mitigates torpedo damage, mitigates torpedo flooding chance. Uh, resistance a bit, but I'm probably not going to need that, so I'm not going to spend any points there. I will be spending points on reinforced bulkheads. This is just in case I get hit and I start flooding or I have a fire, it's going to put that out faster. So that's six points spent here. Um, Anti-flooding, anti-flood one is free. And Citadel, Citadel three is free, Citadel four and five will cost you one or two points. The range at which I'm fighting, 20 kilometers. Um, I probably can't even hit something at 20 kilometers. Well, sort of. Let's go for a turtle back armor because it's shells that are going to be penetrating the hole on a more horizontal level, so belt armor. So it's going to cost me another point. Um, so far I've spent 11 out of my 40 points. I, however, also will need to spend 4 points on bulkheads, just to ensure that the thing doesn't start flooding really quickly. So that is, uh, let's say, general characteristics, bulkheads, bulkheads is 1, 2, 3, 4 points. So I have four here, four here, and seven there. 15 points spent, 25 points to go. Time to go with the armament. Light shell, oh, interesting. Light shells are free. Standard shells will cost you one point. Heavy shells, two, and super heavy, three. Considering I'm only targeting a heavy cruiser and two lights, I think standard shells would be fine. Light shells, well, they do reload faster. They are slightly faster, higher mu muzzle velocity, less flash fire chance. It just remains to be seen how much I can pen. I'm expecting to be fighting at around 10 kilometers, so that's 7.3 inches. I already have a belt armor of 12 inches effectively and a bit. So this means that I would not be able to pen the ship at 10 clicks. Uh... Seven and a half, something in that range. Mm, should be enough. Right. Light shells it is. So no, no point spent so far on armament. Type of propellant. Let's not go for Lidite, because it has a fairly high flash fire chance. It's not... Uh, sorry, yeah, it is worse than uh, Cordite. White powder is also not great. But the thing is that high TNT is going to set me back five points. TNT is 4 points, 2 powder is 3 points. Less flash fire chance, less uh, high explosive shell damage, but more shell pen. So this is to offset the light shells. 2 powder is going to cost me 3 points, so spend 3 points on armament. Autoloaders will cost me uh, loading automatic 3 points. 1, 2, 3... And then I'm probably not going to use torpedoes at all. I'm just going to build a uh, high-end gunnery build. Okay, so then the equipment. I'm definitely going to go for a high-end sonar system if I can afford it. It's sonar is three points. Uh, radio is not required. Range finding. Stereoscopic orchestral incidence is four points. Uh, in this case, gun aiming speed, considering I'm going to be switching target and not really focusing on long-range duelry or gunnery. Coincidence is probably fine. That's uh, one, two, three, four points. So far we have 21 points, 26 points, 28 points spent. I can still upgrade the ship a lot more. Radar, generation two radar. Two more points to the equipment. Um, that actually leaves quite a bit for upgrading. But I'm not sure if it's a, such a good idea to go for the upgrades right now. Because I still need to set some weapon systems up. And let's see, the aft weight offset. It's now a four weight offset. Now, I want all the guns to be of the same caliber. Gun reload here is going to be 14.7 seconds. Fairly good rate of fire. Damage, 69.8, 53.1, Oh, interesting. The, the 8 inches is a Mark IV. This is a Mark V. 
which means that the 9-inch gun loads faster while doing more damage than the 8-inch gun. Curious. Is 9-inch enough? Because I have about 13 inches of armor. Mm, I can pen that at 10 kilometers. So probably yes. And 10 inches is overkill. I think 10 inch guns. It would allow me to pen at 10 kilometers, provided I can hit that, which I don't think I can. 16.7 uh, inch and 18.5 and inch at 7.5 kilometers, which, considering light cruisers, is probably going to cause overpens. Which is not really what I would like for this ship. Uh, hold on. How about going with an unusual design? Something bow heavy. Main gun, side guns. Uh, nine inch. Oh, come on. There we go. <clears throat> that fits. Sort of. Does it though? Yes, it does. Will it rotate? It should. So this gives me 12 forward firing 9 inch barrels, only at the expense of an aft weight offset of 0.6%. And yeah, that's what I was afraid of. I've set everything too far back to be able to put another 9 inch turret on there. So that's going to have to be something a bit smaller, like a 7 inch. Putting aft weight offset at almost 9%. Uh, what if I take this turret farther forward and do the same thing for those side mounts? Main guns, side guns, 9 inch. Jeez, you really have to set these things up manually, otherwise the game is not going to allow you to do it. Come on. I know you fit. Just need to find the exact pixel where it does want to fit. Here? There. Alright, after weight offset, 3.9%. Um, six inch guns. Because they also have a decent forward firing arc. I have an after weight offset of 3%. 3.9 in fact. What if I switch that to a 6? There we go, 1.2. That's better. So this thing is banking everything on being forward firing. That means that if I'm going to turn, I'm going to have to do it fast. Um, let's see. This is armament. So armament's going to have um, another electro-hydraulic. Three points. One, two, three. So this is no longer 6, but this is 10 points. Equipment is going to go to 9 points total. So that's 19 points, 26 points, 30 points, 34 points. I still have 6 points left to spend. And I would like to do that on making the ship more maneuverable. 676 meter turning circle is substantial. Propeller shaft 3, 675. Aux 4. 624. It's still not great. Speed 35 knots. 36. It's 36. Yeah, that's it. 36 knots. Now this means that I'm going to have a very fast chip and that's going to come in very handy in part 2. Because part 2 of the challenge says, now at sea, one of your ships, after a successful start to war raiding convoys, or to war raiding, to the war raiding convoys, Spots three ships, the United Kingdom, one heavy cruiser, two lights, 20 kilometers out, moving to engage. Defeat them without taking serious damage and return to the fatherland with all due haste. Fastest time to sink all enemy ships wins, provided your ship has at least 50% structural integrity left and can make at least 18 knots at the end of the battle. Otherwise, you've taken too much damage. So I have to keep the ship alive and, um, well... This I can just reduce to zero because I have no secondary guns. Everything's main. Are those six inch guns going to do anything useful? Because I could put 426 tons on armor instead. 
Yeah, let's do that. At my speed of 35, 36 knots, I should be able to get close to the enemy quickly. And then I can spend quite a bit on belt armor. Eight and a half inches of belt armor, that's more than anything should be able to pen, at least at some range. Of course, with a nine inch gun or an eight inch gun, um, eight and a half inches of armor plus 110% is going to get penned around 4,000 meters. Um, here we're looking at seven and a half. If they manage to get 11 inch armor or 11 inch guns, all bets are off. And we're gonna get penned pretty quickly at, well, virtually any angle. Bit more belt extended. I'm gonna put more on the turret. Lots more on the conning tower. That's a bit more than I was going for. 12 inches. Gotta keep that conning tower active. Turret top, probably not that required. Um, belt. Nine inch armor belt. Oh, there we go. Five inch belt extended. And nine and a half inch turret armor. All right, I'm going to do a quick recalc on to see if I actually did not overspend because that will immediately disqualify you. All right, recalculated. I'm at 39 points and that means that I can spend one more point on an upgrade and I'm gonna do that with anti-flood two. Uh, it means I'm going to have to take some of the armor off, but in case I do get hit, and it's, well, I will get hit, but the ship starts flooding, I can at least pump that back out and get that speed back up. So we're going to have to reduce armor a little bit. I'm going to do that on the turrets. We're going to do that on the belt. And a bit on the conning. No, the conning tower doesn't really add that much. Uh, deck armor. There we go. After weight offset, 0.9. Point four, done. All right, let's take this ship out to fight the enemy. This is the Atlantis. Oh, now I have a four weight offset of point five. Oh well. All right, the plan, rush in. Get the enemy as quickly as I can. So get to the enemy as quickly as I can. Ensure that I do not ever get hit by a torpedo. Because the moment I get hit by a torpedo, we're going to be in serious trouble. Fortunately, this light cruiser, at least superficially, does not carry any torpedo launchers. And it carries 6-inch guns, which should be very easily uh, bounceable. I shouldn't have any issues with those. Are we in range? 16.7. No, we're not. Where's their heavy? This is where RNG kicks in. Because if their heavy cruiser is spotted or is spawned and turned the other way, then that can take up some extra time. There's their heavy cruiser. Torpedo launchers visible, none. Guns, six eight inch guns, all of which are on the stern. Oh, sorry, on the bow, stern just has some smaller secondaries. Shouldn't be a concern. All right, fastest time wins. Fast is good, let's get a move on. Reloading in 13.6 seconds, thanks to two powder and light shells. And auto loaders, of course, that also helps. Hit, flooding on the light cruiser. Badly flooding, in fact. And if this persists, then this light cruiser could be proven to have few to no bulkheads. Something like minimum bulkheads. <laughs> Look at this design. Well, or not look at it because it's too smoky here. Ooh, I like that shot. All right. Now, fastest time wins. We are four minutes in. Range to the light cruiser is 12 kilometers and she's still flooding from that one hit. I'm going to say few to minimum bulkheads. And of course, nine inch shells, even though they're light shells, they hit pretty hard. Oh, crap. Do I have the gun reloading bug? Oh, there we, there we go. For some reason, the gun ceased fire. Even though the light cruiser is not in the smoke screen. Heavy cruiser, 16.8 clicks out. 
So far, I have not been hit. And even if I was, I don't think they can do much, right? What's your chance to pen me? 6%. Fair enough. Charge in, we shall go. Looks like we've hit the, the other guy. Yeah, we hit the other light cruiser as well. Could be a case of... Uh, oops, I hit the wrong ship. Wouldn't be the first time, as the AI is quite keen on having their ships really close together. Now, I would really like this identification to hurry up, so I can see if I'm facing underwater torpedo tubes. Right now, I'm not seeing anything in the log. The range is 7.9 clicks. Their ship's from 1935. Um, that could mean that they have fast underwater torpedo tubes. Which would mean that they would be in range right about now. Depending, of course, on the size. Chance to pen? Oh, we don't know because we haven't identified the ship. 86... 94. Fire broke out. These light cruisers are not really putting up any kind of a fight. I've taken six points of damage. That's it. Out of 408 shots. Okay. I've already fired 336 times. Doesn't feel like that. The uh, dispersion over here is not looking great. It's a little better. There we go. Hit. Ah, we have them. Identified. Forward. Yep. Underwater torpedo tubes. Range 12-9. Torpedo visibility, terrible. Very, very hard to see. Only bow? Only on the bow. Not even on the stern. Interesting. I'm going to switch to high explosive because of the high ricochet angle here. And the... What? The Forte, that's the light cruiser that took a big chunk and that flooded. Or was that this one? No, that was this one. That one flooded to 30% buoyancy and then pumped it all back out and she's perfectly fine. But, minimum bulkheads. She is a flooding accident waiting to happen. Now, since their torpedo tubes are, well, yes, in fact, forward... Shouldn't be that much of a threat. I can just keep closing in. Fire. It's not what I'm looking for. I need a kill shot. I need a flooding. Another fire. Structural integrity, 99%. 5.2. Average ricochet chance. More fire. The forward is being ripped apart slowly. Our structural integrity is dropping. Switch back to auto selector. High explosive. Back to armor piercing. Come here. Forward. It seems that the forward is... Yeah, she's either been slowed down because of battle damage... Or she's suffering from that bug again. Which means that ships in a formation, at least in the current version of the game, Alpha 10 version 7.9, they can get a little unpredictable. The way that they perform. 9.45. This is taking way too long with this one heavy cruiser. Or sorry, one light cruiser even. Fastest time wins. I can have a very nice, almost full health Atlantis. But that is not what I need. I don't get rewarded for having extra structural integrity. Forward. 21% buoyancy. Full missed by the Atlantis. There we go. Dead. That's one light cruiser gone. Forte is next. Carnarvon does not have any torpedoes. Chance to pen. 50%. Chance to pen me. 20 Excellent. Keep charging in. Come on. 
She's pretty hard to hit because she's in that smoke screen. Oh, there we go. Accuracy is jumping to 10%. Flooding. Turn a bit to port to avoid any potential torpedo launch from Forte if she suddenly turns in. Chance to pen, 73%. Come on, one good flooding hit and she's gone. E no. That was all over the place. High explosive. Six inch gun should also be opening up. Yep, there we go. There. High explosive hit right to the bow. Because I was afraid of overpens, but I'm not seeing those yet. Another fire. Another fire. The whole ship seems to be flooding now. And then we're getting quite close to the Carnarvon at five and a half clocks. And, well... We probably need to close in a bit more to get some really, really reliable pens. Come on. Four percent buoyancy. One percent. Back up to three. That should kill her. There we go. Gone. Now, the Atlantis is flooding a bit. Probably because I'm getting hit by the... Uh, well, maybe the 6-inch gun did it. Penetration here. And now I just need to catch up with the Carnarvon. I've spent 20 minutes killing two light cruisers. Still have some work to do. There we go. Good hit on the Carnarvon. How structurally sound are you? Not very. Minimum bulkheads. We're getting decent hits. He said, and promptly fired a whole salvo right in front of the ship. Gotta say, it's not really a beautiful design. This whole... Let's go with four triple turrets on the bow. But it does seem to be fairly effective. It's almost like a, a nine inch shotgun, if you will. And if I angle the ship properly, like I am now, it looks like all the guns are capable of engaging the target. One turret, two, three. Yeah, considering the volume of fire, I think all of them can hit. Now, Carnarvon has side armor of 5.3 inches, plus 110%, so effectively around 11 inch. I can pen. Yeah, I can pen that pretty much already. Chance to ricochet is not very high. There we go. That's going to cause all sorts of problems. Flash fire. IT and T. She's not that unstable. Increased ammo shells. That's not helpful. Barbette 4. I think she just got unlucky. There we go. Time 937.24. 9.37.24. So, not too bad. Not too bad. I'd say the design for the Atlantis was pretty good. Um, maybe, considering that I was taking so long to take on those light cruisers, I should have gone with some heavier shells. Because this just does a lot more damage. Especially high explosive, and especially against light cruisers with that high explosive. Still, decent time. Um, ship definitely had plenty of structural survivability. So um, overall, 9.37.24 is what I had left. Which means that I took 23 minutes and 36 seconds to sink all those three ships. Now, over to the other guys. Linked down below in the description. Looking forward to seeing how our new contestant is doing. So be sure to check out the guys linked down below. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next week for next Taskmaster Tuesday.